Okay, everybody. Uh, we are today um, going over what uh, we went over on Friday before uh, um, we broke from campus and everybody went home. So uh, we did have class and uh, we talked about the sociology of the family. Uh, this is one of two lectures that uh, I'm going to give to you this way before uh, your exam, which will be about uh, all of the notes since the last exam when we started talking about deviance. So uh, go back to where we, uh, you know, where we where we started again after the last exam, and it'll be about all those notes. Just study the notes. Uh, but those notes would include uh, these uh, that come out of this this class right here that I'm giving this way. So hopefully this will work for y'all. Um, yeah, I had a great conference uh, back a year ago. Um, and uh, I took, snapped this picture because I realized, hey, we're talking about the the veil, the hijab, um, in intro right about now. Um, and uh, incorporated it into the, the lecture. And so uh, you've got a reading on that as well. Uh, Hopefully you'll do okay on, on the quiz for, for the readings for this day. Uh, when you take them, I'll make that quiz available. Um, and uh, but let's uh, I'll, I'll give you the link for that uh, online. But uh, let's just proceed now. I want to talk about how the veil can mean different things to different people, and uh, you certainly would get the gist of that in that in that reading. Uh, here, I just want to note how the meanings of cultural practices, such as the veil, are have certain characteristics. And uh, one of the points is that the meanings are not endemic to the practice itself, um, but they're produced through discourse, people talking about them. And, uh, and what they're saying, you know, depends on where they are. Uh, and what's going on there, uh, who they are. Those, so those are the different conditions that uh, um, affect the meaning of the discourse and why, for example, the veil means something different in Los Angeles than it does in Shreveport or than it does in Afghanistan or than it does in uh, Iraq or than it does in France, where, by the way, we noted in class the other day, it's, it's been banned in public places, uh, such as in public schools, um, which a lot of people think is a mistake, uh, that it, it, it seems to uh, illustrate that you can only view it one way. But it's interpreted in different ways by those of the same cultural heritage, right? So you can be Muslim and interpret it different ways. Um, so we can then say, generally speaking, that cultural practices exist across different conditions, um, and that means different places, or they're used in the context of different identities. Um, excuse my cursor. Uh, and uh, um, that means they'll have different trajectories of evolution, how they, how they evolve and, and, and develop, and how their meanings change. And there's multiple strands of meanings within them, within each one. So how you view, uh, you know, a milkshake uh, has various meanings associated with it, or a baseball cap, or uh, uh, high heels, or, or whatever we're talking about. Um, okay, so talking specifically about the meanings of the hijab, though, because it is, uh, you know, sort of a hub of, of activity and meaning in our, our culture, um, there's traditional support for it that was noted in the reading that it's to protect women and to promote a kind of society that respects women um, and that does not sexualize them. Uh, but there's opposition to it, um, uh, 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 stemming in part from uh, feminists who note, and that includes males, by the way, who identify as feminists, who note that it, in a sense... Uh, supports oppressive domination even as it tries to counter it. Um, it, uh, it notes a servility um, and a uh, the, it, it seems to say that you, you are serving uh, men by um, supporting their 
uh, notion of their own sexuality that it's uncontrollable. Oh, we'll do this for you since you can't control yourself. Um, it, uh, it makes women and men seem more different than they are. It uh, exaggerates difference, um, especially in circumstances when it shouldn't matter at all. Um, uh, it reinforces the, the idea that male sexuality is uncontrollable, and it supports uh, otherness, seeing people as, as unnecessarily different, more different than they need to be. Um, and then there's also neo-feminists, sort of a post, sort of some strands of feminism that are new and different, um, and some cultural support for it, that uh, it allows a statement of identity, um, so that one person noted that they, they greet me in Arabic when I, when I wear the hijab. Um, it, uh, it allows me to fit in in certain circumstances, um, or not, when I choose not, not to wear it, I can fit in in other circumstances. Uh, and it's an equalizer in gender. It works uh, against objectification and the assessment by appearance. It's not make appearance a, a big deal. Uh, and it sort of helps in that way. Uniforms, I suppose, do the same same thing. That's that's the basis for their using uniforms in, in schools often. But there's there's discontents about it, and there's tolerance as well. You know, in general, there's cross cultural uh, perceptions of it. We recognize that they're different, uh, and uh, so there's an increasing sort of tolerance for these different norms because we recognize that people perceive it differently. Um, and, uh, and even intra-family conflicts, where uh, we, we note that younger people may even have more support for wearing the hijab than older people. And we talked about that in class. We, we noted that uh, uh, grandparents or, or parents who are recent immigrants uh, may be more likely to eschew and not use the hijab because they want to fit into U.S. society, whereas they're their kids who uh, don't speak Arabic, for example, or are, you know, uh, well integrated into American society, don't feel any problem with fitting in, and they might want to wear the hijab as a cultural statement or a statement of identity, and it's a more of a positive thing for them. They're not as worried about fitting in. Uh, all right, well, we're going to talk about different forms of, of family uh, in the uh, in the next in the next lecture, and. Uh, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll leave you with this teaser now. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop this um, if I can. Oh yes, my goodness. Let's see. Here we go.